welcome to my channel. My name is Melody and today I'm going to be reacting to the new Netflix film Love and Gelato which just so happens to be based off one of my favorite books Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch. I'm gonna have a timestamp down below to jump ahead if you want to skip my intro where I talk a little bit about the book, what it's about, and what I hope the movie is going to be. Um, so check down below for that timestamp if you want to jump straight to me getting into the movie, but other than that, I'm gonna just tell you a little bit about what I'm expecting and that kind of thing. Love and Gelato, I first read it in 2017, right after I had studied abroad in Florence for a semester. And because of that, the book immediately had a place in my heart. If you don't know anything about Love and Gelato, it is about a girl named Lena and her mother has just passed away. But before she did, she told Lena that she really wanted her to go and live in Italy for a while, specifically Florence, because Lena's mom had studied in Florence when she was in college for about a year or so. And so she really wanted Lena to experience that part of her life after she was gone. So basically it's a kind of coming of age story, a story of self-discovery for Lena as she deals with the loss of her mom and you know her world being turned upside down as she tries to navigate and discover this new world of Italy in Florence and it's also a romance too sprinkled in so I absolutely adore this story it makes me incredibly happy I've read Love and Gelato a couple of times and each time I love it so like I said I just have a soft spot for it I think it's an incredible book and I'm really hoping that the Netflix film really captures the spirit of Love and Gelato. We will see. You could say I'm already pretty apprehensive about the film because it's not set in Florence. Don't know why, guys. Don't know why. <sighs> It seems like kind of a big plot change, at least for me, I don't know. Uh, the film is going to be set in Rome. To me, that's like a big no-no. Like you're already straying way too far from the book. I feel like for general audiences though, or people who haven't read the book, they probably don't even care. You know, I, who knows? I just hope that the rest of the story really follows the book, but we will see. I'm just really mad it's not going to be set in Florence because I would have killed to have a movie set in my favorite city in the whole world, but let's just start the movie and see how it goes. Starting off strong in Rome with a view of the Vatican, panning over the river. Rome is beautiful. I love Rome. It's just not Florence. Ah, okay. So, so far we're starting good. Her mom has passed. Her mom has left her a mystery about love that she found in Italy. So that is so far true to the book. So let's see how we go from here. No one could wear black, just pumpkin spice, her favorite color. <laughs> she was so weird. That's cute. And not in the book, but cute. I really loved her for it. She wanted Fleetwood Mac to play or local cover band, Fleetwood Zack. I really appreciate the reference to Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> this part wasn't in the book at all, but I, I appreciate the reference to Fleetwood Mac. She mandated that I still go on our mother-daughter graduation trip to Rome. I guess she went when she was my age and she found her purpose there or something. <laughs> I asked if I could bring my best friend in the world at Okay, so a two-week trip to Rome as a graduation present? In the book, it's very much more of like a life-changing event for Lena. She is moving to Italy and because she, she has nowhere else to stay after her mom dies, her mom really wants her to live in Italy. So that's a big difference. Like in the movie, it's just a two-week trip and in the book, it's like a, an entire like life change for Lena. So that's a bit different. I love Addie already. In the book, she was a lot of comic relief and she was such a great friend to Lena, even from afar. And so far, I really love the movie version of Addie as well. Addie, you've never been to Ireland. I haven't read Love and Luck yet. I'm starting to think it's about Addie. Maybe it 
is. You know, I know nothing about Love and Luck. I have it on my bookshelf. Yep, Love and Luck is about Addie. <gasps> That's cute, I didn't know that. And that is such a cute touch that they have in the film, kind of referencing Jenna Evan Welch's second book, Love and Luck. That is so cute. And I'm kind of hoping that they film Love and Luck. Let's, let's hope. Well, let's see if I like Love and Gelato first, but if I do, and then they film Love and Luck. So cool, I love it. That was neat, okay. Moving on. I pretty much don't have any family anymore. Did your mom ever talk about maybe finding your dad? Are you kidding? She said if she ever saw him again, she'd have to be bailed out of jail. <sighs> Damn. Mm. She really was the goat. Interesting. In the movie, her grandparents are dead. In the book, her grandma is alive. But very cryptic, kind of about what's going on. And Alina's mom never really said much about her father. She never, you know, told Lena who her dad was, but she also never said anything negative about him either. So, well, we'll see what goes on. I love the crazy Italian driving sequence. That is very, that can be accurate. I'm just gonna say, um, I'm guessing she's talking. Yeah, that's Francesca. Francesca is in the book, but she doesn't appear this uh, soon, I guess you could say. And uh, Lena knows fluent Italian. Like, first of all, highly unlikely for an American student to be pretty fluent in Italian. She definitely wasn't in the book. The whole language barrier thing was part of the book, part of the transition, part of her fear of going to live in Italy. So oh, it's kind of a pet peeve of mine whenever a book is set in Italy and like miraculously the main character knows Italian when really like why would they? It's not realistic. It'd be more realistic for her to have to battle the language barrier and I was looking forward to that and she did that in the book. I don't know why. I don't know why. Moving on. <laughs> I love this. No traffic? <laughs> zero traffic, zero pedestrians. When did they film this? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Right next to the forum too. Ah, Lina, ti presento il mio rompiscato le cugino irlandese Howard. Hi. Bene, Mac. Sorry, Lina, the resemblance to your mother is uncanny. Howard Riley. That's Howard? Um, in the book, he is described to look nothing like Lena, very tall, blonde, I think. I was not expecting that. And Howard is Irish? That's just so weird. Um, instead of being a like a southern gentleman, like in the book, he's Irish. It's just odd. The more wrinkles that mock you in the mirror, I suppose, the more you think about the past. She did say that coming here changed her life. You know how exactly? Oh, Italy has a way of transforming you. That is so true. I like that line. In the book, Howard was, he was like the supervisor for the American Cemetery in Florence, which thinking about that, I think maybe it would have been kind of hard to film there and film that. Um, I don't know, maybe because it's a cemetery or something, but weird, he's like a professor here. Who? Alessandro? That's not even a guy in this book. Hold on a sec. Oh yeah, okay, so his name was Thomas and he was studying at the same school that Lena would 
eventually be attending in in Florence, you know. Uh, and he was from Britain. Yeah, he had a British accent and his name was Thomas, so I don't know who this Alessandro is. he supposed to be Thomas? I don't know. Well, I mean, the view, the view is amazing. It really is? That line, that old line. Yeah. Ugh. The Colosseum! It's good that the journal is actually in the movie. Oh, I love that building. Read it, read it, read it, read it. Hello, diary. I start with a question. After meeting your nursing school admissions officer, do you A, have a freak out panic attack, B, tell the parental units you just deferred and blew all your graduation money on a plane ticket, C, buy a diary, Duh. D. All of the above. June 9th. The sun has set, but Rome is still chattering, like it's alive. I'm living with a pretty great family. Their daughter, Francesca, is my age and so not thrilled about me not being an American boy. Her mother made me spaghetti alla puttanesca, and it's oh my God. seriously the best thing I've ever eaten. <laughs> wow. Well, Oh, that's cute. The character of the mom is very true to the book in this part at least. Her quirkiness and everything, I love that. The way she's talking about Rome is exactly how she talked about Florence, like the magic of it and stuff, and it's just making me wish it was Florence even more. But it's still cute. I have to admit, it's cute so far. Oggi. Oggi. I got that one. <laughs> Alessandro's getting this backstory. I'm wondering what role is he playing here? I don't know. If you're going to that party, the first lesson, maybe the only lesson for the evening is how to walk. A woman walks with purpose. Dignity and tips. <laughs> okay, I do appreciate the Francesca we are getting in this film. We don't get as much of her in the book, at least in present day. We get quite a bit of her in the in the journal, but I do like Francesca in the film. She's fun. <laughs> All right. Nice dress. Not in the not in the book. Uh, ridiculous. I I know. I had to borrow clothes. It looks charming. Thank you. Actually, yeah, yeah. Let's drink. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> A two thousand one. A two thousand one Sangiovese. Holy moly. <laughs> Reserva. Am I watching Pretty Woman? <laughs> because it feels like it. It feels like I'm watching Pretty Woman. Uh, this definitely didn't happen in the book. Why? What are you so scared of? Um, a lot of things. Um, heights, for starters. Um, security guards, planes, snakes, um, large crowds. You. Lena is such a little scaredy cat in this. She wasn't quite like this in the book. She, I mean, was nervous, but she wasn't totally, you know, anxious about everything. This is a totally different Lena, in my opinion. Wait. You go meet your, your commissioner person. I mean, Wait, it's not like you'll remember this one tomorrow. Right? Lena. Lena, please. Alessandro. Hmm. Uh, interesting. None of this happened in the book. I'm not sure what's going on. 
like why we're getting so much of Alessandro. I was feeling like he was going to be a red herring character, like a bad guy in, in you know a sheep's costume, but I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Walking home seems a lot more dangerous. No? Uh, excuse me, where where are we? It's a secret. I don't do drugs, just so we're clear. Lorenzo. Ah, okay. Lorenzo. So this is Lorenzo, and he looks nothing like he does in my head. It's your life, not his. Right now, I'm more interested in you. And believe me, that's not something I've ever. What? What? Cat intermission? Cause Alessandro's an ass. What am I doing here? What are you doing here with not your dad? I know this looks like what this That's embarrassing. <laughs> and so not the Lena from the book. Like what the heck? This is so up Netflix's alley of having to be quirky and funny. Just stop Netflix. I just... Light. We are halfway through the movie and we don't have any context about Lena's dad. She hasn't thought about her dad once and in the book that's all she can think about. All she can think about is how she thinks Howard's her dad and how awkward it is trying to strike up a relationship with a dad she's never met and her mom never talked about and how different they are and you know it's mostly about them building the relationship and we're halfway through the movie and she hasn't thought once about her dad or how Howard might be her dad. Um, okay. Hey Siri, translates. She understands everything else, but she doesn't know what sono incinta means. So realistic. Sono incinta. I found this on the web. Uh, uh, Lina, this is nonna, nonna, this is Lina. <laughs> this is the base. So I'm guessing we're gonna get a little bit of a cooking montage where she'll fall farther for Lorenzo and I guess we're getting Lorenzo's Nonna. Not in the book, but it'll be fun to watch. Who is this? Is this Ellie? Oh! Georgia? A racer? Lorenzo's girlfriend? What? <laughs> In the book, he's dating a beautiful, blonde, bombshell Swede named Ellie, I think. And, uh,. Not this girl. Not this girl and why she appeared out of nowhere, again, halfway through the movie, I don't know. But I don't have a beautiful familia anymore, which is why I can't fathom how I can have a father who couldn't even be bothered to show up my entire life, not even when the woman he said he loved died. I'm, um, sorry, Juan Apetito. I'm getting so many mixed signals from Lena in this version of her because she's so quirky and shy and scared of motorcycles and cliff jumping. But then she'll stand up in front of a group of people and totally embarrass herself. You can't just pick and choose when you're courageous like this, you know? It's just not realistic. It's very cinematic and not like the book at all. <laughs> If you're not this, this ex-guy. His name is Matteo 
Rossi. Hey, they got that one right. He was her professore of photography and mm -hmm. much as I hate to say this, Lena, you well, you'd be better off with that. Are we going to Florence? Go to Florence. <gasps> the Roma Termini! Please go, please go. <laughs> My question is, if we really are getting a sequence in Florence, why didn't they just make it like in the book? Like, why is it flip-flopped? Trust me, everything is better after Hmm. True. This whole backstory of Lorenzo being a cook and going to Florence for this cooking thing is not in the book. There's no gelato on the train. But I'm guessing the the filmmakers wanted to bring gelato more into the plot of the movie, I guess, because of the title. I don't know. Okay. Uh, oh my god. Uh, Please, yes. Ponte Vecchio? Oh my god, that shot! Okay. Didn't show the rest of Ponte Vecchio. It looked like that the shops were closed. Okay. I mean, it had to have been probably to get that shot. Oh wow. This is what I came here for! Show it. Show it, Florence. There. That is so green screened. This looks like so Mercado this Centrale. It's my favorite place in all of Florence. Did you know that all this stuff comes from local farmers? Yeah. Okay, so we're getting uh, the movie backstory of why he doesn't like Alessandro because he didn't stand up for some really awful thing his friend said to his mom. And then, turn around. Piazza Santa Croce. It's very late and, and that's and definitely not the street that face is there. Okay, see the street there? One block down is his I, gallery. I changed my mind. I'm, I'm not going. In the book, it's actually a picture of Lena that she sees in her father's gallery so that she knows that he knows of her existence, you know? because Hadley had sent him a f one of her photos, one of her professional photos, signed by her, you know, of Lena as a child. Oh. They're not gonna show it? They're not gonna show the confrontation? Why does it feel so awkward? Oh, it's so different. Like, I don't know why they hesitated to put in the part where her actual father uh, tries to make Hadley, her mom, look bad. And he was saying, oh, she was obsessed with me and it was all her fault. And he was such an ass and they totally cut that out of the movie for some reason. And also, very little of Florence was shown. I'm a little sad. The movie does not sell me with their romance nearly as much as the book, you know? Like, the movie spent so much time with Alessandro and so little time with Lorenzo when really, in the book, Lorenzo was with her from the beginning throughout the whole process of trying to find out who her real dad was and all this stuff and I'm I'm just not sold on it. Miss Guzzi, can I get directions to hot Italian boys? Addy. What? <laughs> I feel like that moment with the padlock and the key was trying to be the book equivalent of um Lena going to that tower in the countryside and it just does not hit the same. The tower moment in the book brings me to tears, guys. It is beautiful. It's really the part in the book where Lena is grappling with her grief. And yeah, yeah, the movie, it, it touches on her grief just a little bit, but you definitely feel it a lot more in the book. And 
it's a very big part of the book is her dealing with her grief over her mom so when when did he leave now he just left for the train station don't you get it we are so screwed up we are perfect together we are the same lena that is that's your sales pitch i okay okay fine but i'm driving clean energy i love it hello hollywood uh okay C cinematic drama is here good luck you too interesting you She drives a Vespa through Rome, risking her life, just to tell Lorenzo. What? <laughs> I, I'm choosing me. Good luck. What? What? I mean, I guess what were they gonna do with, you know, Lena going back to America? Again, from the beginning, I was like, that's got to be an issue. It's a romance, but if she's only going to be there a couple weeks, how is it going to last? And this is their solution, I guess. Um, she wanted me to come here to figure myself out. And I guess I'm still figuring, so I decided to defer a year. Stay. <laughs> okay. Like, yes, it's more like the book i guess but like but lorenzo's leaving i'm just a little bit i'm just a little confused you were right mom a primo amore non si scorda mai Just get together already. So that's that. <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts. Um, the ending little epilogue, like one year later kind of a thing, like, okay. I mean, I guess in the end, she does end up with Lorenzo, like in the book. But just the process to get there was just much lengthier, you know? Um, overall, I gave the book five stars. I would give the movie three stars. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> it wasn't terrible. I, I think it was cute. I think if you haven't read the book, you would like this movie if you're into, you know, the quirky coming of age rom-com kind of a thing that Netflix loves to do with book adaptations. I am disappointed. I, I'll i touch on it again. I wasn't really sold on her relationship with Lorenzo because we spent a lot of time with Alessandro really trying to play up to the love triangle thing, which there was a love triangle in the book, but it was so minimal. Lorenzo in the book was just so much so much better. He was, he wasn't nearly as awkward as he was in the movie. He was actually like really cool. You know, he's kind of a cool guy and funny and all this stuff. Where I could have done without the whole cooking competition thing. We didn't get enough of Lorenzo. We sure as hell didn't get enough of Howard. Howard was completely just absent the first half of that movie, it seemed. And that was such a big part of the book. The book did such a better job of splitting the different plot lines up more evenly. And we had more of the grieving process in the book. So I feel like Netflix took out the harder hitting aspects of the book. They just kind of took them out and they made it more of a rom-com and they tried to make it more of a love triangle rom-com. Obviously no movie is going to beat the book, I don't think. It's kind of what I expected it to be. It's kind of a disappointment. I'm still salty about it not being set in Florence. I was probably doomed from the get-go. I was always going to be salty about that. I think overall it did a good job capturing the spirit of Love and Gelato and again I don't think it's a bad movie. I think it is really cute and there are some glimmering parts of the movie that I really enjoyed but 
the book is better. The book will always be better. And I guess that's my two cents of it all. Congratulations, Jenna, for having your incredible book turned into a movie. I think that's amazing. And yeah, I guess that's just the way the cookie crumbles. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you feel so inclined, and I might see you in the next one. Ciao!